Hey you guys and welcome back to Biolog. Hope you're having a great day and a great week. In this video, we're going to be looking at some last minute tips for the IGCC October November 2025 exam season, which is this exam season right now. So make sure you guys stay till the end of the video because my very final tip is going to be the most specific one and the one that I think you guys can implement maybe the day before your exam or right before your exam to get as many marks as possible during that exam period. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Alrighty, tip number one is to create micro triggers so what does that mean micro triggers are basically simple sentence words that summarize the concept that you're trying to get across right especially because now you guys only have your mcq multiple choice exams coming around uh, in the next couple of days i would recommend creating a definition or micro list sheet what that means is let's have a look at an example here. So basically for any concept like in biology, if I'm doing a multiple choice question on biology, that would mean to incorporate the concept, but in as concise of a wording as possible, in as concise of words as possible. So that means, for instance, enzymes, what are the key words, you know, around the topic of enzymes? Is it active site? Is it collision numbers? Is it enzyme substrate complex? All of those things, temperature, pH, all of those things impact the way the enzyme works and those are key words in relation to the topic of the enzymes that I should remember in order to answer even short answer section questions as well as multiple choice questions. Let's be real, with all of these new AI tools like Claude, ChatGPT and Gemini that have come up, it's getting really difficult to identify what is human written and what is AI written. But luckily, there is something new that's come up that can help solve that and in academic writing, it's super important that we actually kind of understand what is the difference between a human written piece of information versus an AI written piece of information and to solve that issue is the SciSpace AI detector. So let's have a look at some of the features of the SciSpace AI detector and what I love about this is that the new SciSpace AI detector is a detection system built exclusively for academic writing and research writing. So what's cool is that it's not just another AI general checker, it's actually trained on a huge curated database of real research papers including those that capture academic tone, citation patterns, um, technical vocabulary across multiple fields, etc. In a benchmark study that was actually done over 4,000 passages across four different domains, there was different research papers, essays, news articles, summaries, etc. SciSpace actually performed a major detection tool out there that hit a 96.2% F1 score and a 92.8% accuracy score on research papers, academic research papers, and therefore it's actually been ranked as the best AI detector in the market currently. SciSpace has even tested it against some of the biggest AI models including Claude Sonnet 4, Gemini Flash 2.5, Claude Opus, Gemini Pro 2.5, OpenAI 03, and SciSpace has always been at the top of the list every time. It has scored over 99% F1 on Claude models and still held a strong 77.1% on OpenAI 03 detections, which is one of the hardest models to detect AI-generated text in. What I love about SciSpace is that it's actually built for students like yourself and it detects academic integrity. So it's making sure that students like you actually gain some benefit from using AI, but also stay true to academic integrity guidelines set by your school or university. It's about supporting honest research and not policing creativity. And that's one of the main things I love about the SciSpace AI detector. So make sure you guys check out the SciSpace AI detector. I will leave all of the links in the link in the description box below, as well as the coupon codes, as well as the link to the tool in itself. So do make sure you check it out because I think it'll be super useful for all you IGCC students watching. And with that, let's get back into the video. Tip number two is do not do a fully timed paper. Now, the day before the exam, you're already pretty exhausted. You must have done most of the preparation that you are required to do for the IGC ex exams right by now so you want to make sure that the day before the exam you're taking as much rest as possible but also keeping a bit of a refresher of the topics so that means like I previously mentioned make those summary sheets and keep revising those summary sheets on and on again just the day before the exam also keep in mind the command terms so the day before the exam you should really just be taking that day to reset do not do a fully timed paper instead make sure that you're going over your mistakes from the past exam papers that you have done so by now you should have made a mistake booklet and if you guys want to know a bit more about the mistake booklet concept i will link a video here or here somewhere as well as in the description box it goes into a lot of detail about how to make a mistake booklet for future exams if you want but make sure that you're going through your mistakes from 
from those past exam papers because what that will do is it will give you an idea of okay what exams what mistakes have i made in the past and how can i make sure i'm not doing those mistakes in tomorrow's exam right so it's about making sure that you know the concepts well enough and it's also about making sure that you do not repeat the same mistakes that you've made in the past if you do want to have a look at some practice questions the day before the exam try to only do the most recent exam paper that means that you're not doing the entire exam paper itself you're just doing the most recent exam paper so if the uh, 2025 exam october november is what you're doing you might do the 2025 feb march exam paper or the 2025 june july exam paper to make sure that you're just doing the multiple choice section and flag highlight the harder questions so the more difficult questions are the ones that you're going to be focusing on and making sure that you're doing that question over all of the multiple choice questions because in that case you're just wasting your time so make sure that you're focusing on just doing the hard questions the day before the exam all right tip number three is to create default guess patterns now because we're talking about the mcq the multiple choice exam i want to make sure you guys understand that most of the time there are going to be two options that are completely wrong and i have said this so many times in all of my videos especially for the multiple choice videos that most of the time in MCQ papers, two of the options are completely wrong. You can cross them out. You can rule them out, eliminate them completely. The other two options are the ones that are going to be slightly confusing. So you want to make sure that you can narrow down the options to just two of them. And then once you get to those two options, it's going to be one of them that either has some sort of weird word in the middle that you can rule out that allows you to rule out that option. For instance, if it is a definite option, that means that if it says something like this will definitely occur, the enzyme substrate complex will form or the enzyme substrate complex um, is guaranteed to form under this circumstance. What that means is it's a definite answer, right? It's causative in that sense that it's giving you, yes, this will 100% occur, which is not always going to be the case. So that option is likely going to be wrong. And due to elimination, then using the elimination method, you can cross that option out, giving you the final answer as probably being option D or option C or whatever, right? So that elimination method is what I would recommend you guys use for your last minute preparation when doing multiple choice questions, making sure that you understand that two of those options are going to be definitely wrong. So focus Focus on ruling out those two options first and then go back to the other two options and then narrow it down based off of that. All right, tip number four. This tip is specific to the day before the exam. I like to use the method called study, shower and sleep. What that means is I'm studying the concept. So I'm looking over my summary sheets and my the tip that I firstly mentioned as my tip number one. I would look over whatever I've done from that, the mistake book to the summary sheets. That is my studying for the day. I'm not doing any practice papers or anything full fledged necessarily. I'm just focusing on the main concepts and the main brief ideas of the concepts and what I've learned for the tomorrow for the exam tomorrow. So I would focus on studying. I would take a warm shower. Now, why am I saying take a warm shower? It's because of the fact that the warm shower enables your brain to be more active, right? So it's about increasing the vasodilation in your body, increasing blood flow through, through your brain so that it makes sure that the brain is active. It can absorb and retain whatever you've studied previously. And then finally, once the brain is active and it's kind of uh, in that flow state of mind, you then go to sleep because then that's where your memories are starting to form the memories are going to be converted from short-term memory to long-term memories right and then they're being stored so doing this kind of method of study warm shower and sleep will really help you improve your retention span before the exam the next day my last tip tip number five is to pre-read diagrams before sleeping so a lot of the questions especially science in IGCSE biology a lot of the questions will require you to label a diagram right and that's usually about two to three marks what I want to make sure you guys know is to label that properly and to remember what is what right so do not confuse diagrams so make sure that you have a summary sheet of diagrams with the labeled markings for instance the diagram of the heart diagram of the digestive system the different parts of the digestive system the nitrogen cycle all of those are difficult sort of diagrams to remember so I would would remember those diagrams using a summary sheet if you want to do this as a day prior activity and what I mean by that is just the day before the exam make sure that you're printing out these unlabeled diagram sheets and then redoing them constantly be doing space repetition 
um, at least three to four times for the same diagram. So for instance, I might print out the diagram of a heart, unlabeled format. I might redo that diagram at least three times during the day, the day before the exam, so that it stays in my brain really well, right? So I wanna make sure that I'm constantly revising the concepts that I'm struggling with the day before the exam to keep my memory fresh. So I would highly recommend the day before you just do those diagram sheets do your basic summary notes of the key words and the key concepts. So key words relating to the major concepts like enzymes, photosynthesis, respiration, etc. All of those key words need to be put into a summary sheet. Diagrams need to be put into a summary sheet and also make a command term list. So that means, for instance, what does explain mean? How do I answer a question on the command term? Explain, what does describe mean? State, justify, analyze. All of those are command terms and I've talked a lot about that in a bunch of my other videos which I'll also link here as well as in the description so do make sure to check that out but these are the three main things I would do so firstly the diagram sheet the command term sheet as well as the keyword sheet for all of the concepts and that is it for this video guys I hope you liked it if you did do make sure to like share and subscribe to Biolog and let me know any other video idea suggestions you've got in the comment section down below I wish you guys all the very best for your IGCSE October November 2025 exams I'm sure you guys will do very well and as always let me know if you have any questions either by emailing me at itsbiolog at gmail.com or leaving a comment down below in the comment section and with that I will see you guys in my next video have a great day